Hello, folks. Let's resume with our lesson about plant reproduction. So, next up is ferns. So let's go to the PowerPoint again. So, ferns. Here is our mature. Hold on, before I get ahead of myself. So, here's our mature sporophyte on the underside of the frond, the sori singular sores came the sporangia, which are going to produce spores via meiosis. So these dark structures are the sore eye, or a single one would be a sorus. So on them, they will produce little tiny balls on stalks. That's what they, these dark things are. They are clusters. Of little tiny balls on stalks which are covered with spores. So let's go ahead and look at that. So we start with a spore released from one of these sporangium and undergoes meiosis, mitosis, whoops, pardon me, mitosis, mitosis, some more mitosis, it produces a gametophyte, a little heart-shaped structure. So on the practical, you're looking at an image of a little blue or blue-green heart-shaped structure. A little, bunch of little nodules right here and some root-like structures at the bottom. You're looking at a gametophyte. So you're looking at a fern. The large things are going to be archegonium. So again, arc, egg, archegon, egg, okay? Antheridium, sperm. So, anther, male, arc, egg, okay? So, this little tiny structure, and it's microscopic, we're gonna look at a microscope slide of it in a bit, and you'll almost never notice them in uh, the wild unless you go out specifically looking for them. They produce egg and sperm, and once they meet, they undergo fertilization, and from that gametophyte grows your sporophyte. So it eventually turns into this very large frond, which you probably will notice. On the underside of which we'll produce sori. When we take a microscopic look at that, you'll see that on the underside, they just have little tiny balls on stalks. And all these little chambers or cells, and on the inside, it is full of spores. Once that opens, they re are released into the wild. So these are sori on a fern. This is a cross section of a frond. You can see on the underside, this whole group of structures is the sorus. And one of these balls on the end of one of these stalks is a sporangium. And on the inside, they are full of spores. So, whoops. Let's take a look at that real quick. All right, look at that, picture perfect. All right, so here we see our frond. There's the main vein going down the center of it. Let's take a closer look. So let's zoom in on one of these. Yeah, it looks like a crazy underwater monster or something like that, or a lava. And also at the same time, kind of similar to other land plants. Anyways, from this image, this whole group of sporangium is your sorus. These little balls are your sporangium that entire structure, these chambers on the outside that look like a rattlesnake tail, 
Those are the cells forming the sporangium, and these things on the inside are your spores. So let's go back. Oops. So, the sporangium are producing haploid spores through meiosis. Spores will disperse, form the heart-shaped gametophytes called prothalia, held to the soil by rhizoids, not true roots. Again, anthridia producing sperm, argonium producing eggs. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay. All right, so mine is not quite as picturesque as the other one over there. Let me go ahead and write this down. It's a little bit curled up, maybe a little bit more mature. Anyways. So all these dark spots up here are archegonium. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties there. Anyways, and then down here, you see these little nubbins. Those are the antheridia. So way down here at the bottom, those are your male reproductive structures, antheridia. Up here, all these dark spots, those are the female reproductive structures. And this entire thing is called the prothallus. Root-like structures are called rhizoids, just like in your marcantia. So let's go ahead and find a good plane of focus where we can see some archegonia and antheridia. Take that photo. All right. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. So, entire thing's the prothallus. In the center is archegonia, the antheridia. May be out here by the edges, or they may be further down here among the rhizoids. Gymnosperms are the dominant gem generation of gymnos. Pardon me. The dominant generation of gymnosperms is the sporophyte generation, the tree. The metophyte generation is so greatly reduced, it occurs inside the cones, and you're probably never going to notice it. So let's take a look at that. So once to once a pint wait actually getting ahead of myself. That's all for ferns. Uh, I'm gonna do another video for our conifers next. So let me go ahead and call it.